And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Welcome to Sounds of Revival, a program and teaching ministry calling for the church to hear and respond to the sounds of revival, which are calling us back to our first love and back to our place of holiness and dominion in the earth. Sounds of Revival is brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center, located here in the city of Indianapolis at 6433 East Washington Street, where the pastor and founder is Bishop Perry E. Jackson. And now, Sounds of Revival. Blessing you today and welcome to our program, Sounds of Revival. Brought to you by Greater Love International Church and Revival Center. Well, God is good and his word is good and the truth is good all the time. And we have a word for you today regarding God's plan for man to be freedom, to be freedom oriented. And that freedom is what God initially had um, planned for man. Remember in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, they were free. They were free from uh, sickness, free from poverty, free from sin, free from so many things that we are burdened with today. So when Adam sinned, of course, mankind was plunged into deep trouble. But God had a plan. Genesis chapter 3, 15, God had a plan to get man out of the mess that Adam got us into. Genesis 3, 15, remember the Bible said that Satan will bruise your heel it was you who bruised his head. In other words, there's a way out of all this. How was that way made? Adam, the first Adam, messed things up. But the second Adam, that Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, was prophesied about the second Adam, Jesus Christ, who was going to come to restore freedom back to his people. Freedom from everything imaginable. God wants us free. And now the topic we have using, of course, is Project Freedom 7, and this talks about the ministry of Jesus. When Jesus came to earth, he came with a mission, and God had given him a project, Freedom 7, to free mankind of all the bondages that Adam actually got them into. So therefore, when we talk about Freedom 7, and also for subtopic, talking about how the seven battlefields of Christian warfare it all comes together in the fact that God has said, you are free with, you got, you got a battle on your hands. The Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. So when God makes us free, yet we still have a battle to stay free. And so Jesus came to set us free from everything that the first Adam got us into trouble with. And sometimes people say, this must be too good to be true. Some Christians say, well, if Jesus came to set me free in these seven areas, these seven areas of sin, sickness, lack, um, generational curses, sexual bondage, love of money, and pride, why am I not free in these areas? Because what God gives you by grace, you have to maintain by faith, and you have to fight for it. Glory to God, and you have to take a stand for it. You have to have some, um, as it were, um, grit about yourself. Have some backbone. As the Bible says, of course, in the book of Hebrews chapter 6, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12. Glory to God, 6 and 10 through 12. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So God is calling for strength, that we must take on the strength of God to be able to fight against the onslaught of the adversary. Now, in the last program, we were talking about various ways that uh, Satan tried to take God's people into bondage. And just for a, a recap here, or a recapitulation for a few moments, regressing to what we said on the last program concerning the fact that um, God will set you free, but that's only part of the story. Glory to God. 
and we, we we refer to the scripture found in the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, it said this, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. Remember that? Still talking about freedom number 7. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. Why did you say that? And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. People, when you were born again, you were set free. But also, you must realize that freedom is not free. The initial part of your freedom is free. As was said before, that you were born, you didn't have to pay anything. It's free. So you were born again, but you spend the rest of your, your life paying for it. Amen. You have to sell everything that you have. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23, buy the truth and sell it not. You got a war on your hands. You got a fight on your hand, and it's a fight to the death, fighting for your very life. This Bible and the teaching, this teaching is a matter of life and death. It's not someone, if, if you lose the fight, then you, you get a second prize. There's no second prize. Winner take all. Hallelujah. And when you're in this battle, what do you got? Battle to keep your soul and to keep your mind and to keep your heart close to God, keep your heart free, then again, if you lose the battle, Glory to God, there are no second prizes. There are no bronze medals. Glory to God, gold or nothing. There are no silver medals. As in the Olympics, you have gold, you have bronze, you have silver. No bronze, no silver, no fourth place, no fifth place. It's heaven or hell, nothing in between. No purgatory, sorry, hallelujah. It's all God or none at all. Gold or nothing, amen. So what we're saying here, this battle is real. Therefore, you must understand what kind of battle you're in. It's not a, it's not a game. Glory to God. So, so your freedom that you get, then you stepped over on God's side, and then the devil had become your arch enemy. And the devil, the Bible says he's powerful. The Bible said, of course, in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8, said, be sober, be vigilant. Still talking to Christians. You're born again, Christian. Uh, don't don't you know? Don't play, Christian. Be sober, be vigilant. Get your head on straight. Keep it on straight. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, that devil, your enemy, the devil, is a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Then what did he say in the next verse? Whom resist? We just quote to First uh, Peter chapter five verse eight. Now verse number nine says, "Well, what are you going to do with this devil?" He said, "Whom resist." Steadfast in the faith, glory to God, knowing this, that your brethren in the world are also suffering the same temptation. In other words, all God's children got a battle what, on their hands. All God's children have to resist the devil. James chapter 4, verse number 7 said this, resist the devil and he'll flee. James chapter 4, verse 7, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee. So you have to resist and you had to re resist him steadfast in the faith, believing in God, asking God for his help and for his strength and for his power to be released in your life. So there's power that God has for us. Again, as we said in the last program, talking about Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8, by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. So by grace are you saved. That's wonderful. Amen. Grace saved all of us through faith. Now, but you see, that's only a part of the story. By grace are you saved. Now, the next thing, how did you get saved? Where did you get saved? Most of you, you kneel, knelt in your heart or you knelt at an altar, according to Hebrew chapter 4, verse number 16. It says this. Well, actually, verse number 15 says, We have not the high priest. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. We have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. So it's talking about the life of Jesus. He stayed free from sin. Now, the next verse said this. Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace. That word boldly means like get there in a hurry. Be serious about it. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So the throne of grace, of course, is that altar, that prayer place. Hallelujah. It's interesting how if churches are not careful, that altar, 
That's the most important part of your church. Amen. Not the choir stand, not the pulpit, glory to God, not the pews, not the stained glass windows, not that steeple on top of your church, glory to God, not that beautiful red carpet or whatever your carpet color is. The most important area of the church is that altar. Jesus said, quoting Isaiah, he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. You hit that, that the altar is the most important part. Why? Because if that altar is not in order, everything else falls out of order. Glory to God. Because you are kept strong by your prayer life. By, in other words, drawing strength. So the first place, when you were born again, you got born again at the altar. You bowed your heart, bowed your knee, and God came in. Now, that's, you were saved by grace. Grace, that's the throne of grace. Remember also, one definition for grace is this. Grace means divine supernatural enablement, divine help. Now, one, another um, definition of the word grace, of course, is of uh, the um, unmerited favor of God. But grace has more than one meaning. Look in your dictionary. Unmerited favor of God is good. But now, another aspect of grace is this. Great, the divine enablement of God, divine supernatural help. That you, if you don't get that supernatural help, so you are supernaturally saved. Okay, grace means supernatural help, divine enablement. So therefore, you were born again when you had to, can't help us in the world, couldn't help yourself. You wanted to stop sinning. You wanted to stop lying. You wanted to stop stealing. You wanted to stop doping it up. You wanted to stop hurting your wife. You wanted to stop hurting your children through alcoholism. All these things had you bound. But Jesus said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. That's Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, 29, 30. Come unto me. I will give you rest. I will free you from all that. So you come to him, knowing that there's no way in the world if you had in 20 lifetimes could you save yourself. So you humble yourself at that cross and say, God, I can't do it by myself. He can't help us. I can't help myself. So you stood at that altar, the throne of grace, and grace came. Ephesians 2, 8, by grace are you saved. You got some divine enablement, help that you in no wise could have given to yourself. Only come from God. You couldn't save yourself from drinking. You couldn't save yourself from, glory to God, all the other filthy sins that you're in. Who saved you? God did. At the throne of grace. Now, a lot of people stop right there. Next thing, if you want to stay saved, stay free, guess where you're going to have to park yourself? Hallelujah. Right back to from where you first received God, where you first got grace in the first place. Grace is still there. See, the Bible said in the book of James, also in the book of Peter, said, God giveth more grace. What does that mean? Friend, you need some more grace. You don't need just saving grace, but you need grace that's going to keep you saved. Amen. What's the deal? I mean, what's so important about getting saved if you don't stay saved? Glory to God. What's so important about starting a race if you don't finish the race? Which is the most important? Both are important. Glory to God. We seem to forget that I need grace to finish this race also. How, where, where, where do you get that grace? The same place that you got it and with the same prayer that you have say, God, help me, save me. Then guess what? The next, you come back to that same place of grace and help. Say, God, keep me saved. How is it because there's a devil out there who can take you out. The Bible warns us about the devil, and the devil is not playing. And the devil is not, he, he's real. And the devil can destroy you. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, um, St. John, chapter 10, verse 10, the thief or the devil cometh not. But what, what does he come for? But for the steal kill and destroy. Satan can kill Christians. He can destroy Christian homes. He can steal what God has given you. He can steal your health. Glory to God. He steals, kills, and destroys. That's what the Bible says. So don't play the devil cheap. Amen. He's no dummy. He's smart. He's matter of fact, he's been around here longer than most of us. Amen. He's been around thousands of years. So he's smarter than you. So Oh, wait a minute. Well, that's not fair. Why would God 
uh, set me against the devil. He's older than me. He's smarter than me. He's bigger than me. He knows more than me. What am I going to do? I'm glad you asked. Hallelujah. Because that would seem unfair that God would pitch you up against the enemy that's bigger than you, smarter than you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And he's stronger than you. Well, what are you going to do? Your strength doesn't come from yourself. That's what, that's what the throne of grace is for. Let us therefore come boldly. Remember again, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. You better run back to that altar. Amen. The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower, Proverbs 18, 10. And the right says, runneth into it and is saved. You need to run back to that altar. Glory to God. And park there. Amen. And that be your second residence. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That be your living place. Hallelujah. That's where you should live. That's where I should live. Park there. Hallelujah. And go back there frequently at the cross, at the cross, at the throne of grace, and get you some mercy, get you some help. Come therefore bold into the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. By the way, you still need some mercy up in here. Glory to God. You need God to forgive you if you slip up and mess up. Glory to God. Oh, yeah, that throne of grace. We need that throne of grace that we, that, we, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. Okay, watch this. Grace to help in time of need. Remember, grace means divine help, supernatural help, grace to help, not just natural help. You don't need natural help. You need supernatural help. Just like when you were born again, you didn't need natural help. You didn't need a psychiatrist. You didn't need a counselor. That's natural. You need... There's somebody called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. There's a counselor, but he counsels you supernaturally. Glory to God. And when he speaks, things happen. He can speak and pick you up and turn you around, place your feet on solid ground. One word from God can change your life forever. Hallelujah. And keep you changed so that one word can change your life forever. But you need more than one, God, one word because the same word that changed you, you need another word to keep you changed. Hallelujah. And most of you know that, right? That's right. If you've been in the Christian world, any, any length of time, people will get born again, free from drug addiction, free from prostitution. Oh, my God. Free from every imaginable sin. Cleaned up. Hallelujah. Walk in that church, toe up from the flow up. But when God gets through them, with them, they are free. Hallelujah. No more bondage, but glorious liberty. And you know they've been saved because you watched their life before they were born again. They were in big trouble. But God saved them, brought them out, cleaned them up, set them up. Hallelujah. Now, but what happens a year later? Jifting back into the pit that God delivered them from. Glory to God. Jifting back into that bottle that they left in the bar, going back to that bar, same bar, picking up that same bottle of wine again. Hallelujah. Slumped over a bar stool, out of their head, drunk, and not in the Holy Ghost. Not drunk with the Holy Ghost. Well, what happened? Some would say, well, they didn't get it born again. Oh, yes, they did. Jesus warns you. Again, in the book of uh, Revelation 3 and 11, he said, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which you have, that no man take your crown. Hold on to it, because that devil's coming after it. He's coming after your freedom. Glory to God. And, and altogether, too many cases, we find people, the prostitute, saved off that block. Hallelujah. Selling her body, selling her soul. Amen. And you know she got cleaned up because she told the pimp, I ain't pimping for you no more. He told her boyfriend, I ain't shacking up with you no more. Told her friends that were prostituting with her, I can't run with you anymore because I'm running with Jesus. Hallelujah. And she got saved. Hallelujah. And she was delivered off the block. And her pimp had to let her go. Hallelujah. And her friend that she ran with, they said, she don't run with us no more. She got cleaned up. But then what happened a couple years later? You... Look past there and miss sanctified and hold her back on the block. And she ain't there in the name of Jesus either. What happened? I'm just letting you know it's reality. Satan can't steal from you. Satan can't destroy you. He can take you back to the pit that God delivered you from. He ain't playing. Hallelujah. So that's why I'm just wanting to establish that. So therefore, and where do most folks miss it? If that prostitute got saved at the throne of grace, supernatural help, 
Problem is, somebody forgot to tell her the same supernatural grace that picked you up and turned you around, that same supernatural gra grace will have to keep you up, keep you turned around, keep you straight, keep you right, keep you in the arms of Jesus, keep you, hallelujah, from yourself, keep you from the ravages that are out in this world, keep you from those hellhounds that get on your track after you are born again. Satan will be on your track trying to turn you back, but that's all right. Jesus is walking with me, hallelujah, and he's got something for every last hellhound that tries to ride you. Jesus got an answer for each hellhound that tries to take you back, hallelujah, because he has told you what your answer was. Come boldly, like Huh? That word bold, like you better run back to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Don't leave that, that grace, that altar vacant. That's what gets most folk into trouble. Nobody told them that they told them as you get born again, oh, you're so, it's wonderful. You spoke in tongues and that's wonderful and, and, and you look so wonderful. Uh, you, you, you even, there's a light on you. When, you know, oh, you look like an angel. Oh, my goodness, you just look so different. Amen. Come here. Now, you got born at the altar. Come and sit down. Find yourself a pew in the, ch in the church and relax because you're born again. You're looking like an angel. Oh, my goodness, your hands look new and your feet do too. Uh, and just have a seat. No, don't have a seat. Don't sit too long. Get back to that altar that you can get some power to stay saved. Hallelujah. If you miss that, you will go back. Hallelujah, because you can't save yourself. Hallelujah. You may want to save yourself, and you may be thankful, but you got to come back to that altar, and the Bible talks about travail at that altar. I mean, spend some serious time in the face of God asking him to do what? Save me. Keep me saved, Lord. Keep me from where you brought me from. Glory to God. Luke 9, 62, the Bible said, No man... Jesus said this, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Get to that altar and don't look back. That's where you need to be. And remember the song that they sang, at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart was rolled away. It was there by faith. You remember that song? It was there by faith. I received my sight and now I'm happy all day. Guess what? That ain't all the sight you need. You're going to need some more sight. Get back to that cross. I'm talking about the sight that you received when you first got saved. The Bible said, Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 18, the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more to the perfect day. Psalm 119, verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. I mean, yeah, you got saved with some light, but you need some keeping light. Hallelujah. You need some staying power light. Hallelujah. You need some keeping strength. Hallelujah. You need some staying power strength. Glory to God. Don't just glory in the fact that you got saved and you got so much strength. You better get the Bible. He give more grace. Why? Because you are need some more grace up in here, up in here, up in here. Do you hear me, Christian? Hallelujah. And I don't care if the, if the altar in your church is vacant. Well, you unvacated. You may be the only one at that altar, but they stay on your face because you found out why you're wavering. You found out why you seem to be, uh, why you used to be strong. You found out that you didn't stay at the place of grace, the place of strength, the place of help. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, you need some help when you get born again. Hallelujah. Again, Hebrew 416. Come boldly unto the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. And watch this and find help. You got that? Help. Say help. Find help in the time of need. Is there any time you don't need God? Oh, yeah, you need God. This is the time of need right now. Hallelujah. You never run out of the need for God. You never run out of your need for help because the devil is on your trap. Hellhounds are still after you. They didn't just close up the shop and give up on you. They just wait for another chance to come after you. They want to catch you with walking down the street without your chaperone, Jesus. Hallelujah. How do you get Jesus to chaperone you? You at the altar and say, God, go with me. 
get on your face and say, God, when I get off the altar, come with me. Glory to God. Every day, come back and ask God to be your chaperone, to chaperone you. And David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. You want God to be with you? Well, God ain't with you until you're with him. The Bible said in the book of James, chapter 4, verse number 8, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. When is the last time you drew, 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 you drew near to God? You got that? James 4, 8, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. That's how it works. If you want more of God, then you draw near to him in prayer, and then he'll be with you. Glory to God. But the strange thing, the altar is the most unimportant place, in it. it should be the most important, it seems like it's the most unimportant place. No, you, you go to church, you find nobody at the altar, you find the choir stands full, glory to God, and you find the, 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 the pulpit got somebody in it, and you got seats, but nobody's at the altar, and that's where everybody needs to be, the pastor needs to be there, the choir, the choir members need to be at the altar first, hallelujah. The Bible said that's what I'm going to quote the scripture again. Jesus said it. He quoted Isaiah. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Amen. And don't get at the altar and play. Get at that altar and pray. I mean, like, serious. Why? Because your life depends upon you. You won't live if you don't have a prayer life. You will die, Christian. And Christian do die. Hallelujah. Because you don't have a prayer life. Get a prayer life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lead people back to the altar. You'll be the first one in your church. Lay on your face at that altar and cry out to God and say, I'm sorry for leaving you. God bless you. My time is up. God bless you. And we want to make you an offer today. The Bible says in the book of John chapter um, 14, verse 26, it says this, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father shall send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring unto you remembrance all things. What have I said to you? So if you desire to hear this program again and other programs that we're done, we have a um, code right there on your screen, and you can just Google this code into your um, computer, and Google it in, and or in, on your cell phone, and you will be able to hear the messages again. So that code, of course, is HTTP, and then it has a code in there, two slashes forward and so forth, and that will actually pop up our program again for you and you can listen to it again because again sometimes if you listen to a message twice you can receive something that you did not even receive the first time so god bless you and avail yourself to that particular uh, benefit we're offering you right now god bless sounds of revival was brought to you by perry jackson ministries and greater love international church and revival center in indianapolis at 6433 east washington street worship sunday at 8 a.m and 10 30 a.m tuesday bible class at 7 30 p.m and saturday morning bible class and communion at 8 a.m prayer precedes all services for directions or to receive your free bi-monthly newsletter Call 317-796-0938 or email jackson-perry at att.net. To request today's program or sermon on CD, please send an offering of any amount to Perry Jackson Ministries, P.O. Box 26891, Indianapolis, Indiana 46226. Ask for the offer number on the screen.